Hold in. Hey, we're heading down to America to see what we can find. Friendly places everywhere from most folks around the United States. Heading down to the United States to see what we can find. Family, 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 family. Heading on down to America to see what we can find. Hey, how's it going? Frank, it's good to be back after a week off. Um, that pretty much sums up the latest debacle. Rebel, 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 rebel. In the rebel, 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 rebel. It's the saga that we now call America. Why can't you just stop being like assholes? That pretty much sums it up. It's just everybody's just being assholes. Today was like insane. Like what we have no one thing I. What was the one thing I wanted after this election? What was the one fucking thing I asked? Everyone for everyone to shut up and not be an asshole. Yeah. Well, we got the assholes. We were fooled. I mean, I thought that I honestly thought nothing was going to happen, and uh, today they literally took over the Capitol building. Because when one side acts up and nothing happens to them, or the other side's going to act up and nothing's going to happen to them. It, 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 we're, we've become a rule of mob. Yeah, and I think everyone's realizing, too, you can't stop the mob. I mean, it's ridiculous. Some lady, uh, apparently she was an Air Force vet. She got shot in the face and she died. Was she a rioter? Was she, what was she doing? She was, yeah, I think she was storming. She stormed the Capitol. So who shot her? Uh, I guess a cop. Oh, uh, boy. It's just, it's, it's a joke. It's a complete joke. And imagine, like, being from another country and, like, just seeing, like, this shit happen like the entire world i'm sure is laughing at us joe biden has one job as president it's not to become the rubber stamp for nancy pelosi he needs to rein in nancy pelosi he needs to rein in all the the radicals and he needs to calm things down but if he pursues the radical agenda it will only make it worse yeah no doubt it will only make it worse he doesn't sound like he's going to pursue the radical agenda, but you don't know who's go- going to be in his ear. He's not going to be running anything. He's going to be a puppet. And really, it's up to what Kamala Harris wants, honestly. I mean, she's going to wind up being the president at some point. I mean, when you look how many years being a president puts on people, and he's already 79, he's very old, he's seen his better day. It's like, how is he going to do a whole four-year term? Yeah, like I said, who, that Biden has to Biden has to just calm the fuck things. He needs he need that, that, that even though the Democrats are going to have everything, a fifty fifty split is not going to help. With Kamala Harris going in there and not changing every uh, and that uh, being the, the difference maker, that will just it will just inflame everything. It will just create more anger, tension. Um. No, he has to find a way to be the calming influence. And if he could do that, then bully on him. He'll, he, uh, he will earn a lot of respect. Yeah. But, if he, but if he just if he, uh, he goes with the radical agenda, if he lets the, uh, the Pelosi's and the, uh, the AOC's pastor, uh, like AOC is already talking about uh, the, uh, the uh, banning cows. <sighs> I mean, she's a, she's a fucking lunatic. She's crazy, yeah. And, and uh, the, the, she has her flag. We won't thread. We won't. We will tread. <sighs> uh, it, 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 it just, there's too many nutcases right now in charge on both sides. Yeah. They're the ones who get all the voices. And if somehow Biden can get that, just calm things down. That's his only job. You know, it will help, too, and hopefully in a couple of months when everybody can start going back to normal life. Yeah. When we can do things again, and uh, hopefully that happens by March or April. Yeah. 
They're already Certainly. fucked up this vaccine rollout, though. <sighs> of course they did. They've gone a lot slower than anticipated. Because we are incompetent. Yeah. I think this whole past year has just proven that. that just like wh- everybody in charge, everyone, you know, people are just, they're unreliable and they're incompetent. The people running things. Government, that's why you can't trust government. That's why you need smaller government. This government sucks. Always has, always will, always has been. And it's government, just like, all, all government does is try, is try to regulate you. Live, uh, the, the, yeah, they're better than you. It, it, mm-hmm. It's ridiculous. And just like the job market right now, like sucks. Like, yeah, I and mean, it sucks. It's it's it sucks for everybody, and and and, and both sides suck. Yeah. Yeah, it's 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 not good. It's really not good. Right we need a third party at least. Maybe a fourth and a fifth party. Break this shit up. Yeah, it's not working. Um, I just like I can't believe what happened today. Honestly, it's insane. So. Um, yeah, I mean, in other news, we do have a lot of sports stuff going on. And, uh, you know, Adam Gase got fired. We had joy. We had fun. We had seasons in the sun. As Chad's went down in flames, it was quite the same. About friggin' time, right? Uh, I would have loved to have seen the reaction of Jet fans if they actually kept him. Imagine that. He was just, I think what the Johnsons did, they kept him for the whole season so that they didn't take the heat once the coach was out. Because that's what would have happened. Uh, uh, the, some people think it's pointless to change a coach in the middle of the season. I mean, sometimes it inspires the team and they wind up winning some more games. Well, the three teams that changed coaches really weren't inspired. Well, Raheem Morris did a pretty good job with the Falcons. No, he didn't. The Falcons are the Falcons. The Falcons are the Falcons, yeah. But he did, he did a, you know, a decent enough job, all things considered. They did win a couple games. He's the them. only one that has a shot of maybe staying. I think Dabble uh, on the Lions, he's been interviewing elsewhere. And I know he interviewed. he did interview for the Lions job as well. Um. And then, of course, Anthony Lynn got fired, too. Yep. They finished 7-9, and nine, I think. But well, they won their last four games. Yeah, they were 3-9. They, were and nine. they wound up finishing 7-9. and nine. But, but what it was was they had so many close losses that were lost on, like, some just, like, weird decisions. Poor decision-making. Yeah, that's what he said. His, his critical decision-making in, in, uh, in big spots really was not good. That's and the reason why they, the uh, the Chargers won their last few games is they kind of had an easy schedule down the stretch. Yeah. I mean, they played the Chiefs when everyone was resting. They played uh, they played the Raiders. They played the uh, the they played their their brothers the uh, the the Chargers East or the Falcons West. It was the Chargers East <laughs> or the Falcons West, whoever you want to call it. So, <laughs> and, and, and you know the Atlanta Falcons Twitter. Actually sent out the Spider-Man meme. I did see that. Their Twitter's ridiculous. They'll they'll post things like they posted something the other day. They go, "We've reported, we've reportedly interviewed Eric Bieniemy for our head coaching job." <laughs> Their main Twitter account tweeted that. Hmm. And just speaking of, did you see uh, Jason Garrett is going to be interviewing for the Chargers job? Please God. Give them well, the, uh, the, the, the Dolphins just lost their offensive coordinator. Who, who was it? Who they, what happened to him? He resigned. Oh, Chan Gailey. Yeah, there was reports that he was going to be fired, and then the Dolphins denied the reports, and now he was resigned. I wonder who replaces him. Eh, who knows? They just didn't move the ball down the field fast enough, and when they went up Temple sometimes, Tua played better. So it was almost like uh, he was like the fall guy for some of two was like uh, tenderness and failures. And then, yeah, and then also uh, 
I mean, week 17 did not go, did not go well, obviously. No. And the, and the Bills not resting anyone. Everyone else rested everyone, except the fucking Bills. I know. So they had nothing to play for, and they didn't rest anybody? They had either two or three. They would be playing this week anyway. If the Dolphins won that game, they'd be playing uh, the Browns right now. And the Browns without a coach. Yeah, I know. That's crazy. To drag. And their, uh, their Pro Bowl guard, he's been on their team for seven years and gone through all the losing and stuff, and then he's out for the playoff game because he has COVID. It's a, it's a drag. I was wondering, like, I mean, some of these guys, I don't know if these, if they're actually sick, but some of these players and coaches probably have been sick, and I guess those have been the ones who have missed, like, more than a game or two. But, like, I just had it, as you know, and uh, I was pretty damn sick for, like, a week. Now, what did it feel like? I remember I, the worst I ever the, – the, 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 the two worst sicknesses I've had, I had some sort of, like, fucking sickness after the Giants won Super Bowl twenty five that locked, knocked me for a loop for a week. And then I went uh, – in the, 19, the 2006 uh, uh, NLCS, I had a uh, upper respiratory infection. Yeah, it, it was uh... – It's one of those things where, like, I got, like, a headache. So it was last Monday night I got, like, a headache. I knew I had been exposed to someone in my family. I I had found that out on Sunday. Monday night uh, I started to get a headache a little bit and, like, a scratchy throat, whatever. Didn't think anything of it. The next day I woke up and my throat is sore and my headache is, like, kind of all over, like, in my sinuses and my pressure points. And uh, then, like, you just kind of get progressively worse each day. You get more and more symptoms. Uh, Wednesday, I was going for a COVID test, a rapid test. And uh, by then, I had my chest was congested. And, uh, you know, you have phlegm and a cough and uh, stuffy nose, sore throat. And my headache went away. But, um, you know, at that point, I kind of knew that I had it. And I tested positive. And uh, then after that, just felt like shit for the next, like, uh, they say like the days like five through eight are the worst, and I think that was definitely accurate. Like New Year's, I was sick as a dog, um, just really tired, and and just you have to stay propped up because you're coughing up. You're really like I, I had like kind of like a bronchitisy cough, which sucked, but uh, now finally starting to feel better. I, and I lost taste and smell on Saturday, and I haven't really. I'm like kind of getting it back today, but um, I've heard that people lose it for like two to three weeks. Oof. Yeah, it suck. Eating sucks when you can't taste anything. So, want to know how I found out uh, that I uh, couldn't smell anything? Mm, how did you find out? I so first I couldn't taste the Gatorade I was drinking, and then I couldn't like smell. I like started smelling my shirt. Tried smelling my armpit. Stuck my nose on my deodorant stick. Because that's obviously strong and like to see, like to make sure I, I couldn't smell it. Jeez, <laughs> <sighs> uh, what a fucking terrible nightmare. Yeah, so now that's how I spent my New Year's. I, I got it right after Christmas and uh, spent the New Year uh, sick mm-hmm. at home. But uh, uh, thank God, I'm glad I have the antibodies and now hopefully people will be vaccinated by the time. Uh, I'm, uh, Happy New Year. Happy New Year. It's already started off in a fucking crazy fashion. Uh, maybe, maybe we all died. Maybe uh, 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 we're just now in the, the in this tenth layer of Dante's hell. That would be the only logical explanation, I think. Like, it's just like getting, prog- it's getting progressively worse. And now there's this new, the new strand. <sighs> Like, that'll be the fucking next thing. Did, by the way, did you know the UK, um, they're, like, basically saying, all right, we're just going to vaccinate people the first time, and then uh, we're going to make them wait longer to get the second vaccine, and we're just going to give the rest, the second doses to everyone else to get people vaccinated the first time. They're going against Pfizer's trials and recommendations and just kind of winging it in the UK. Oh, you see, this is even uh, even over there. The government fucking sucks. They lock down every other day. Uh, 
it, 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 it's hell. It's 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 hell unearthed. I'm honestly shocked that we're still like open in New Jersey for the most part. Uh, I'll give it a couple of weeks. Well, the the noise is like around Thanksgiving and Christmas. It like was louder that that it was going to happen, and then you know, idiot Cuomo uh, closed indoor dining again in New York and Pennsylvania. Also did, and then uh, you know things have kind of quieted down, at least from like a closing down standpoint. That I think well, everyone said, "Fuck it, we're just going to go and we're going to roll until we got uh, till everyone's vaccinated in the spring." I went to a uh, a, a, a diner tonight. Uh, Stack had a uh, the only place that I know that uh, has a real good uh, ch- chicken fried steak. I you went to to the Stack. Yeah, the Stack in Carney. No. Where North is it? Well, it's it's North Arlington, actually. North Arlington, yeah. I actually, uh, I've been, I used to go there all the time. I actually was there in the fall too. You, you yeah, it's the, right on the Passaic River. My brother got the chicken fried steak when we went in the fall. <laughs> so you like your fan? It's the only place that I know in this area that you could get it, and it's good. Who'd you go with? You just went on your own. Yep, after my own, I I didn't really get a good chance to walk around it today in New York. Ended up uh, doing um, an hour on radio. Did the uh, the rundown, and then I had to write my the, the on this date vlog, do my uh, taste test. So I never really got a good chance to uh, that hour forty five minute walk that I usually been taking lately. So I came home and I did it. I well, did it in uh, No Park in uh, Lyndhurst, which is near the train station. It's a uh, it's between the train station and the uh, municipal hall. It's called uh, uh, Livingston, like um, the, the, the borough, the borough park or something like that. Little Livingston Township Park or something like that. Uh huh. And like every five minutes, there's a sign that says, "No, no, don't do this. Don't, no, 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 no." And, and I felt like singing. And the sign says, "You can't go skateboarding in this park." You can't play baseball in the park. Don't even bring your dog. No, no, don't do this. No, no, don't do that. When you're playing handball, don't, no, no, chalk on the sidewalk. No, no, skateboards in the park. No, no, rollerblading. <laughs> I mean, I mean 10 feet, there's a different sign that says no, no, don't, no, no, don't, don't, no, no, no. Oh my god! <laughs> I've never seen a park this neurotic. That's insane. Probably no walking on certain paths too. Uh, no, don't go on the stage. <laughs> That's ridiculous. No, don't dunking in. No dunking in the uh, the, the fountain. And the fountain is gone. There's no fountain. <laughs> because the fountain's turned off during the winter, and they put the Christmas tree in the fountain. Have you ever been there before? Uh, this is the second time I've walked around this park, yeah. And did you remember that about yeah. the last time? Yeah. Well, I only went a couple of weeks ago, so. Is this your new, like, uh, New Year's resolution to walk around? Yeah, I kind of started it a little bit before New Year's, but yes. That's good. Yeah, I see you've been posting those video montages. Yeah, the video montages started on New Year's. <laughs> How was your New Year's, Frank? <sighs> Notre Dame lost. Yeah, they are embarrassing. Well, you know, I don't think anyone else would have been done better. No, I agree with you. But Notre Dame, I feel like I watch them get their asses kicked in the college football playoff every year. Yeah, but uh, who, who would have been there? Uh, Texas a m got crushed by uh, Alabama, too. and uh, Cincinnati, Georgia, like they would have lost, too. Yeah, Cincinnati lost to Georgia. Yeah, Florida. Georgia, Georgia always gets... gets uh, Boat raced by uh, Bama. Yeah, and I can't. I cannot believe though Justin Fields and Ohio State versus Clemson. That one, I. That one, I think Dabble Sweeney brought on himself. Yeah, he gave them some good bulletin board material. Um, Trevor, that, Trevor Lawrence did nothing. Yeah, Trevor Lawrence didn't have a great game. Just like right now, Seton Hall is getting. Uh, Boat raced again by uh, Creighton. They just cannot beat Creighton. Yeah, they have trouble with Creighton. 
Remember when I went to the game last year? Yeah, and they were doing – damn, they're down 15. Seton Hall was uh, – you know, they were doing very well, and you jinxed them last year. That was after they beat uh, Nova and Philly. And, and, well, and then, well, they, they lost both games to Creighton last year. Yeah. They just can't beat fucking Creighton. Creighton's got a good team this year, though. Yeah, they're ranked seventh. Seton Hall loses, though. They're eight and five. That sucks. They should be better than that. They have a lot of good players. Well, they they actually got off to a little bit of a shaky start. They did, yeah. They haven't had the easiest schedule, but... Nope. I just, like, it still stings, though, that, that the team they had last year was robbed of a tournament appearance. Uh, and Rutgers should have went in, and they haven't been in a tournament in 30 years. Yep. You know, they haven't been in the Final Four since my dad was a freshman. Who, Rutgers? Yeah, when Eddie Jordan was on the team. I mean, a lot of teams haven't even been to the Final Four, so. <coughs> That's true. But, um, Frank, what do you think about the uh, what Doug Peterson pulled? Amateurist. I I think this is I I think uh, Doug Peterson has now set in motion his end in Philadelphia. They're bringing him and Howie Roseman back. Yeah, this is like the year that the Giants brought back uh, Jerry Reese. Jerry Reese and uh, Jim Fossil for that last year. Yeah, or not Jim Fossil. Uh, Tom Coughlin for that last year. Yeah, but then uh, 2015, they scapegoated Coughlin and fired him and kept Jerry Reese for two more years. I said, oh, he needs to get better. You yeah, so this is the, uh, the Eagles are in 2015, Giants. It, it never works. Like, when you say that, that you got to get better, what did Jerry Reese do? He had two more bad draft classes, and he spent like a drunken sailor in free agency and put them in And uh, the reason why the, uh, the Eagles have failed is because Harry Roseman hasn't drafted well since that Super Bowl. He's drafted terribly, Frank. There was I Barstool posted, I think it was Smitty, the video of the Vikings brass on, on Zoom laughing at the Eagles taking Jalen Ragor over Justin Jefferson. And they go, really? They go, put the pick in. They picked right after. They go, put the pick in. We're taking Justin Jefferson. Because who the hell would have taken Jalen Ragor over him? Jalen Ragor... Had 31 catches for 396 yards and one touchdown this year. You know how many? Uh, Justin Jefferson had 1,400 receiving yards, seven touchdowns, and caught like, what, like 80, I think 88 balls. The, yeah, the, 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 uh, the Eagles have been ridiculously bad in the draft. Ridiculously bad. Yeah, well, the, they got uh, Ragor. They drafted Jalen Hurts in the second round. Uh, the rest of their picks, and and, 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 and uh, you, you, you're really going to try to evaluate Nate Sudfeld in that situation? No, it was bullshit. They just wanted the sixth pick. They want Devonte Smith. You, well, you know what? Maybe another team wants him, and that team might has the third pick. Could you imagine uh, Devonte Smith reunited with uh, Tua Tunga Viola? They should absolutely do that, Frank. The Heisman winner. Devontae Smith, first receiver to win the Heisman since Desmond Howard. Could you imagine? I, and, and the Dolphins need a deep threat wide receiver. He would be definitely fit. Or maybe you get the Eagles to do, uh, hey, Eagles, give us your uh, sixth pick and give us your second round pick and your first next year. Who and, when he, would- and when the Eagles implode <laughs> next year, the Dolphins will have another top five pick. Yeah, seriously, that would be amazing for them. But wh- who else would they even take if they didn't take a receiver there? Would they take, like, uh, Sewell from the tackle from Oregon? Penny, Swell, Penny Sewell. That's a, that's a definite uh, possibility. I don't know who the top pe- the defender is uh, this year. I think it's going to depend on how a lot goes in the, uh, the uh, combines for the Dolphins. Yeah, it's not really, like, a year where, like, there's, like, a stud ed- edge rusher. Or anything like that. Um, uh, Sertan, the corner from Alabama, hmm. is going to be. A, he'll probably be a top pick. Uh, Which is kind of ironic. I, they're not going to take him at three. No, they won't take him at three. They don't need, but they have two of the best corners in the league, and uh, Howard and and Byron Jones anyway. But and uh, who is the? 
I'm, I'm drawing a blank. Oh, I think they have Eric Rowe, don't they? Yep. And uh, by the way, do you know who uh, Patrick Sertain's father was drafted by? Don Shula. Well, not Don Shula. Uh, Jimmy Johnson, actually. Jimmy Johnson. Interesting. Yeah. Well, that, uh, yes, uh, when uh, Sertain came along, uh, Shula was gone. But what I'm saying is he was a uh, – Sertain's father played for the Dolphins. Yeah, that's interesting. But they – so uh, the Dolphins have the th- third pick, and they have whenever the Steelers pick. And when, when do the Dolphins pick? Are they – what are they, like 20? When's their pick? Uh, the, yeah, the Dolphins have like the 20th pick. <coughs> yeah, they have three first-rounders, so – Plus, they have the uh, the uh, Texans' second rounder, which is going to be pretty early. Yeah, that's amazing. Um, they struck gold with that. Um, and I'm excited because the Giants, I mean, the Giants probably won't get Devontae Smith. They probably won't. They might not get Jamar Chase from LSU. But if they don't get Jamar Chase or Devontae Smith, they might be Actually, I don't know if they had the Steelers' first round pick this year, right? The Steelers have their first round pick. Oh, they last year they had the Steelers. Yeah, yeah that's right. But the, um, yeah, the, the, right now the Dolphins are draft eighteenth uh, and third. Yeah, that's that's pretty. Damn and then coming around again, they'll be uh, they'll have the uh, the Texans pick early in the second round. So that could maybe land them a good uh, like uh, what's him call Travis Etienne. Yeah. What do, you, be picking on there. what do you think the Jets are going to do? You think the Jets are going to get Justin Fields? I think that's what they'll end up doing. If they don't get the, – the, if they don't – who is this moron? Who? Oh. Some moron. Uh, I don't even know who – if you put his fucking name on it. Ugh, some idiot on CBS Sportsline has the Dolphins drafting Zach Wilson. So did, I was going to ask you, did you see uh, Pro Football Focus posted the video where they're like, the Dolphins should keep drafting a quarterback until you find a quarterback. That's what they actually said that you're supposed to do. You're not, you don't do that. You don't waste draft capital every year until you find a quarterback because you're impatient to develop them after one year. Yeah, you just can't give them up after one year. Who gives these guys credibility? I don't know. These people suck. It's like Lewis Riddick even said it the other day. He said, we have a bad trend. In the NFL now, it's where we don't give guys a chance. Young quarterbacks play one bad quarter, bad game, bad stretch of games, develop slower. We give up on them right away and want to just draft another quarterback. It works when you're Josh Rosen and you change coaching staffs, whatever, and, and you have the Heisman winner. You have a chance to get the Heisman winner, whatever. But not when you're just interchangeably drafting new quarterbacks. Uh, I mean, the Dolphins need to, uh, need to pick someone that will help. To it. Either you're gonna help him out by getting him the uh, the big off the bet the big uh, the lineman from uh, Oregon, or you're gonna bring him a stud uh, receiver. It's the same thing with Sam Darnold. The Jets never put the right stuff around him, and it's like if you just keep him, and all the Jets fans are going, "Oh no, he's not the answer. He's not the answer." He had Adam Gase, and he had no weapons. So literally, if they get him Devonte Smith or a top receiver, see what he can do. And they stuck him with Le'Veon Bell. Who's beyond washed up? Le'Veon Bell. The, the fact that the, the, the Jets signed him, and Adam Gase didn't want him, and that got the other GM fired was just like, just it it, it, it set the, it set in, the, in motion the absolute failure and d- dumpster fire that the Jets have been. You know what though, the Jets. Uh, I mean, unless he goes to the Chargers or somewhere like this, the Jets now. You know the the Houston Texans are the only team to not have requested to interview Eric Bieniemy yet. They just hired Casario. Finally, Casario left New England. I, you know, I feel like we've heard his name as a potential GM for a very long time now. Casario now is in is in Houston, but they haven't. Remember the rumor was recent, or uh, the rumor was that Eric Bieniemy was going to want to go to Houston to coach Deshaun Watson. He'll go anywhere he want. He'll go anywhere that offers him a job. I don't know if the Texans are even offer him a job. The Texans, the Texans are are not a good situation for him. No, but Joe Douglas. So Joe Douglas, though, uh, that might be that's a could be a very good place. And I wonder if the enemy would want Sam Donald or if he'd want Fields or Wilson. 
I mean, people are, I think, are overhyping Wilson. Wilson's been very, very good this year. But, like, come on. Who did BYU play? I mean, it's not like they played, like, they played a couple teams here and there, and he was Now, there, there has been a number of good quarterbacks or decent quarterbacks over the years that have come out of BYU. At one time, BYU would have, like, about two or three quarterbacks in the NFL that were, like, like top-level quarterbacks. Or like good backups. Who? Uh, Jim McMahon, Steve uh, Young, Ty Detmer. Ty Detmer. You know Steve Young is actually a like direct descendant of Brigham Young. Really? Yeah. How is that? How? Like great great grandson or something like that. Oh, he's a legacy. Yeah. Well, you know, Brigham Young is actually, like, one of the founders of the Mormon Church. Yeah, I know. And Steve Young is a direct descendant, uh, is a descendant of Brigham Young. Yeah, I can't believe that they're Mormons. <laughs> really? Steve Young, yeah, I never would have thought. And Jim McMahon, honestly, too, because he's kind of like a wild... No, McMahon was not a Mormon. But he went to BYU. Yeah. They Isn't took a... him out... They kicked him out of college like a week after he uh, won his last game. Yeah, I was going to say, isn't that like a requirement to be a Mormon to go there? Uh, it's a loose requirement. You don't have to be Catholic to go to Notre Dame. True. But, I mean, BYU is a little more strict. Yeah, well, at the time, BYU is trying to win football games. That's why they say that their players and their students soak. You know what that is? <laughs> Barstool, I think Roan talked about that soaking. Or it was either Roan or Caleb, but uh, yeah, it's fucked up. Yeah, Mormons uh, are not supposed to drink. Yeah, or have sex. Uh, premarital sex. Yes, that's what I mean. But uh, some uh, there's a uh, a certain uh, segment of Mormon population that takes multiple wives. Yeah. And by the way, uh, where my parents live in Idaho, like eighty percent of the people around them are Mormons. Oh my god! So what's the what's the family nucleus like over there? It's pretty normal, except they're, they're Mormons, and uh, they there's like uh, stores. That the uh, yeah, if you go out to like uh, Rexburg, Idaho, they have a store called Deseret, which is like a uh, kind of like a Goodwill type store where they have cheap goods. It's actually run by the Mormon Church. Oh my god. So you go there, you buy, like, your furniture, you buy it at a cheaper price, it's used, but it's Deseret, and then they have, like, like uh, all the all the people there wearing the ding out there. You hear about the ladder, you want to learn about the Latter-day Saints? <laughs> when they try to sell you the furniture. Oh, my God. With the, with the white shirts. With the, the, the white shirts and the, uh, the, the, the black tie. I feel like your parents live in another dimension. <laughs> Yeah, the Twilight Zone. Yeah, uh, and, and if you buy, and if you get newspapers, the newspapers uh, have like Becky Jo is going out to a Mormon mission. Wish her luck, or Becky Jo just returned from her Mormon mission. Whenever I, I I arrive at the Idaho Falls airport, they have people you know like seeing people off or guys uh, welcome people back with big banners. Congratulations on your mission. Oh, my God. So what What are the papers out there, like the Idaho Post? The Idaho uh, Falls Gazette? The Rexburg, something or other. St uh, the uh, Idaho Standard Journal is one of them. Ah. Uh, yeah, maybe I'll move out to Idaho. I'll cover Boise State for a living and uh, become a Mormon. <laughs> yeah, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Next to uh, Utah, Idaho's got the most Mormons. Jeez, yeah, Utah is big with that. So they're right, Utah and Idaho are right next to each other, correct? Yeah, pretty much. And uh, are they near the D North and South Dakota? No, that's got Montana in between. Montana in between. And Wyoming. Well, Wyoming is to the south. Okay. Uh, Wyoming actually does border Idaho. And it's actually where my parents live. Oh, on the border? You were... Uh, they're like 75 miles from uh, 
Yeah, like like about ninety seven miles, something like that, from uh, Yellowstone Park. Mm. So have they gone? They have probably gone yes. there a couple times. Yes. And you've been there a few times. Yes. What's it like? Eh, it's all right. I haven't gone in. I haven't gone in years because I usually go out there in the winter, and it's kind of not ideal to go to Yellowstone in the winter. Yeah. But it's big. Uh, I've seen uh, Old Faithful. Very nice. No, I went out to Old Faithful, and a passing storm came through the mountains. Of course it did. Snow flurries in July. Wow. You really are the mush. (laughs) (laughs) You jinxed their weather out there, I guess. No, that's how it just is. And then the next day, it was sunny and 97 degrees. That's so weird. And then uh, at night, it's 54 I really miss traveling. Like, I miss traveling so much, I want to go to Idaho now after having this conversation. I know one thing for sure. When this thing is over, and I know I can try to expense a couple of travels here and there, I'm certainly going to do it. With it, with Barstool send you some places? Yep. Doug's just trying to get me down to Florida. I might do that sometime in, in uh, February. Oh, that'd be amazing. Go to Spring Strike. Go to Port St. Lucie with Doug's. I don't know what the openness situation is. And, and of course, uh, uh, Rob Manford wants uh, to do the 60-game season again. He felt it was ideal. Mm, I didn't see that. I, he better not. He says uh, he wants to start, he wants to start uh, maybe getting ready for spring training in May. The thing is, they were talking about, oh, maybe they should delay it so they get everyone vaccinated. They're not going to have, they're not going to be able to be vaccinated until like March or April. They're not going to get be prioritized. They shouldn't be prioritized. Why aren't we producing more vaccines? What's what the fuck are we waiting for? They have their, literally, they have their heads up their ass. We are such a fucking idiot, uh, idiots, idiots. Yeah, it's really hard to have faith these days. Especially in the past year. It's so crazy looking back. I mean, we're not in a good place now, obviously. But, like, looking back at, like, March through May last of last year, like, the shit that went on where, like, everything was just closed. We didn't do anything. Everything was fucking closed. For, like, three months. What the fuck? <sighs> We had joy, we had fun, we had seasons in the doors. We did nothing but sit on our ass and grow up, rotate. I have to say, the only good thing that I've liked about this is working remote. That's the only thing I like. I know you had a hell, a hell of a time with the courthouse, but I mean... Well, you know... Uh... I'm going to Barstool office three or four times a week. Yeah, you're there a lot, Frank. I'm being used a lot. Yeah. I was on the run. I've been on two of the first three rundowns of uh, 2021. So that that's just like they're basically like now we need you tomorrow and you have to go. They just no. tell you what days they need no. you. No, I'm there. I'm there available. Hell yeah. Fridays, I Fridays are kind of like a ghost town there. So unless something is really going on, I'm probably not going to go on Fridays. What days do you typically go? Just Monday through Thursday. Yep. Yeah, you're you're living the life, Frank. I've been saying it. I mean, I was on the, uh, you know, the radio doesn't at eleven o'clock today. Yeah, I know. I missed you on the radio today. And uh, that just happened like last minute. You just strolled in. Uh, yeah, I, I was I was in the in getting ready to start writing my on the state blog, and they said, uh, "You want to do dozens?" I said, "Sure." What did you guys talk about? No I mean, trivia. It was, it was trivia. Oh, you did trivia. Yeah. And I actually kicked ass. What a surprise. I mean, you're the trivia king. If only I could be the, uh, the king of winning some fucking bets. <laughs> yeah, you're definitely not the king of winning bets. We know that. You're the mush. I mean, it's not going to change. Wait, this, 
This is getting ugly. So, yeah, 69 to 42 right now. Creighton. This is a bloodbath. Frank, uh, I'm moving to Hoboken on Saturday. I was supposed to. I was actually supposed to be there right now. I was supposed to move in on New Year's Day, and I was sick. Uh, but I'm moving in this weekend. You got any uh, tanks, cooks, recipes, advice, anything like that? Uh, I'm gonna have to start making dinner for myself every night. So, I, well, you know, you could watch some of my videos in the past. <laughs> your, uh, your grilled get, cheese one. Yep. Uh, get a. Uh, uh, if you don't have one already, get an air fryer. Uh, if you don't have one already, get a forming grill. Those are two definite must-haves, I think. Yeah. It's a bitch to grill things in the frying pan. It takes forever. I Someone gave me this, like, panini press, and that's what I made the, uh, whatchamacallit in, the uh, grilled cheese. And you left the wax paper in it. Yes, I did. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, you know, none of us are perfect. Oh, and get a crock pot. Yeah, I was just going to ask you. I was like, what are your views on a crock pot? Crock pots are nice. Yeah, damn. I do need to get... I need to get at least two of the three that you just mentioned. I do want an air fryer. I just Are they expensive? Do you know? Did you buy one? No, this was actually given to me. Did a fan send that to you or someone gave it to you as a... Someone else gave it to you as a gift? Uh, sort of a fan. A fan slash friend. Jesus, Frank. Actually, I this is actually someone from the courthouse, or used to be at the courthouse. Oh, what the, they just got you uh, like a congratulations for leaving that hellhole, or no? This I had this couple of year, uh, about a year, over a year. Oh, that's interesting. That was yeah. The, when I started like uh, going viral, he sent me this. That's funny. You get the best gifts. Yeah, this this guy actually was a uh, public defender. Ah. And then he uh, moved to Nevada. Joined the casino business? No, he's in, he's still a lawyer out in uh, uh, near uh, Vegas. For the Corleones? <laughs> <laughs> that was the one, the only positive, too, about being sick. Uh, I got to watch the Godfather Marathon all day the other day. Not do anything. Uh, yeah, I haven't seen it yet, but uh, I've heard a recut. Godfather 3. Yeah, it's all over, like, uh, cable, where it's, like, um, you know, where they, they have, like, that line on the listing where it's, like, oh, watch this movie that just came out that you have to pay for. It's that yeah. Godfather right now. That's all I yeah. see. I haven't lo- seen it yet, but, yeah, I've already recut it. Yeah, it'd be interesting. You know, Godfather 3 wasn't that bad. It just wasn't anywhere near as good as 1 and 2. Yeah. But there have been a lot worse movies. I mean, it has the uh, iconic line, just when I thought I was out. They uh, I, I mean, uh, the, the, the worst part about it was Coppola's daughter just couldn't act. Yeah. And she's actually become a pretty good director, you know. What has she directed? What movies? Uh, the most famous movie I know she did was Lost in Translation. Uh which was an Oscar nominee. Well, you know, that's definitely, uh, you know, f- finding your niche, I guess. Do you know how many Coppolas there are in acting that aren't known as Coppolas? What are they known as? Oh, one of them is Nicolas Cage. Why do they change their name? To not be, uh, to not be known as a Coppola. To, like, uh, not be, uh, people to connect him with uh i know nicholas cage changed it to not be connected with his uncle who's his uncle francis ford corpola why didn't he want to be connected with them so he could try to make it out on his own ah that's interesting yeah and be in a million horrible movies uh tell you shire of course was in godfather is uh coppola's uh francis ford coppola's sister who is that? Michael Corleone's sister? Who is it? Yeah. Also played Adrian in the Rocky movies. Yeah, yeah. That's right. And Jason Schwartman is his, is her son. 
And they're all copperless. That's so weird. I never knew that. Yeah, Dad. Nicholas Cage's real name is Nicholas Coppola. Jeez, I never knew that. Is that something like that's a well known fact? Uh, it's kind of well known. In fact, he was actually, I think he was actually even billed as Nicholas Coppola when he was in, uh, uh, what you would call, um, uh, uh, Fast Times at Ridge Run High. Ah. Uh. I feel like that'd be a good trivia question, Frank. <laughs> <laughs> well, you see, I'm the trivia master. Yep, that's true. Um, Frank, you got to be happy. NHL regular season starting next week. Yeah, even though the Devils probably not going to be very good. <laughs> it feels like so long ago where, uh, you know, we had high expectations for the Devils and uh, you got Heinz fired last year. They had the red-black game. And uh, the team P.K. Subban was on, lost 8-1, to one, and P.K. Subban was on the ice for all eight goals <laughs> and had 16 turnovers. Oh, my God. He's washed up. I mean, it's, it's like they did. It, do you know last year he was minus 21? And if you, and you don't get a minus if you're on the ice for a power play. If you add in the... Minus the uh, the goals he allowed the, that were allowed when he was on the power play, he would have been minus thirty seven. Holy shit! And that's being on the ice when you're uh, the, the, the see you could be plus or minus in hockey. And if you're minus, that means the teams allowed thirty seven more goals when you're on the ice than when you're not on the ice. Imagine, I mean, remember when that so was like our last year. Imagine when that was like our biggest problem was the Devils being bad. We had joy, we had fun, we had seasons in the sun. <laughs> yeah, but uh, I mean, hopefully NHL, it's exciting NHL is coming back. And, uh, you know, it didn't seem like they were going to because they were bickering about CBA and they didn't have anything planned out for COVID. Well, their, commi their, their commissioner is, is atrocious, so he's another one that's a total fucking moron. Yeah, Gary Bateman. He's an idiot. So, but, and the Rangers are going to be pretty damn good, I think, this year. You ever hear the story of Gil Stein? No. He was the interim commissioner. But he wasn't commissioner, interim president. See, the NHL didn't have a commissioner. They had a president. They called him the president in the NHL. Uh-huh. And John Ziegler, after uh, he, like, cut the owner's knees off in 1992 to get the season back on track, because there was a strike at the end of the season. And uh, he did a quick negotiation with the players to get them back after, like, 10 days. So it wouldn't hurt the playoffs. And the owners were angry, so they fired him. <laughs> and for while there was a shirt made for uh, Gary Bettman to, to become the commissioner, they put Gil Stein in charge. And Gil Stein signed on this thing. The commissioner's choice for Hall of Fame. To put someone in the Hockey Hall of Fame. Uh -huh. And Gil Stein put Gil Stein in the Hall of Fame. Huh. And they got mad. They... They they uh, quickly hired Batman and took Gil Stein out of the Hall of Fame. Oh, my God. The rest is history. <sighs> but, I mean, hopefully it goes as well as the NBA's actually been going. The NBA's been pretty exciting so far. And as I mentioned to you before we started the show, uh, the Knicks won, have won five of six. They came back from 18 points down and won by 12 tonight. Uh, five and three, best start in eight years. Uh, Knicks are playing hard for Thibodeau, definitely. They're a very well-coached team. They, they definitely found a, a coach that is definitely someone that they need it. Hey, they made, it looks like they've actually made the right choice. Yeah, no doubt. And Austin Rivers had 14 straight points tonight down the stretch. Like, that was amazing. You know, if his dad didn't get hurt, I think they would have won the NBA championship in 1994. Yeah. 
I mean, those Rocket teams were great, but. They were just one player. They, they, that was down to the wire. If, if if fucking John Starks didn't fucking go cold in Game 7, they might have won. Were you rooting for the Knicks back then? Kind of. Were you a Nets fan at the time? Eh, sort of becoming a Nets fan. Drazen was uh, Petrovic? Drazen no. Petrovic get you into it? No. Drazen Petrovic was already dead by then anyway. I know. I mean, like, did he kind of... Yeah, sort of. Fan? He started making me like the Nets. Yeah. At the time, I, I kind of was a Phoenix Suns fan. Because Barkley? Barkley and Ainge. And Ainge, yeah. And KJ? Yep. That was a fun time in the NBA. I'm, I'm Dan, uh, and, and the Suns also had Dan Marley, who was also a fun player. Was the NBA, though, like, the NBA was fun to watch back then. Like, they played defense. But the level of, at, like, athleticism for the players was, like, not it – was, it was a big gap between the superstars and, and the – Not really. Players. Not really. Well, when, when, you watch, when you watch it now, it looks that way. That's because everyone's in fucking, like, uh, different shape now. Oof, but, Frank Seton Hall is down by 40 right now. <sighs> fucking, I know. <laughs> Dylan, this, is, this is just ugly. Dylan Burns is uh, one of my friends. He listens. He's been listening to the show every week since we started uh, doing it together two years ago, however long it's been. And uh, he's the biggest Seton Hall. F- he went to Seton Hall, but he's the biggest Seton Hall basketball fan you'll ever meet. Uh, he's going to be depressed. He's depressed, I'm sure, right now. And he's going to be depressed listening to this tomorrow. And having to relive. Uh, how did Creighton get this, this good? Was. A fucking school in the middle of fucking Nebraska. Creighton was really good last year, and they've built off of it. Clearly. Did you see Mike Francesa and Jim Nance? Did you see Funhouse post that clip of them yesterday? No, I, didn't, I might have missed that one. It was from when Mike. You know, Mike used to work for CBS Sports, right? Yeah. It was when uh, Mike. So Mike was like head editorial director for like research for March Madness like every year and then he became an on-air guy and uh Jim Nance was with him and they were talking March Madness and Mike uh Mike jinxed Chris Jackson and uh and and he also jinxed St. John's too he was like giving his expert opinion um Chris Jackson oh boy him yeah you know who he is right um not really honestly no the original Colin Kaepernick Oh, did he? He kneeled for the net, uh, for the anthem. No, he refused to even come. He refused to even do anything for it. And what happened? He just got exiled for it. Yeah, he's he he's a Muslim now. He became a Muslim. Oh wait 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 wait. Is it what is his name now? He changed it. Mahmoud Abdul Rauf. That's Chris Jackson. If it's the Chris Jackson from LSU, yes. Yes, when he was at LSU, he was known as Chris Jackson. I didn't know that was the same person. Yeah, and he was a lottery pick. That's a Mike said he would still be a lottery pick. He was a lottery pick. Um, he trains Dennis Smith Jr. now. Yeah, that would that, that would that, if it's the, if it's the because he was Chris Jackson in college, and then uh, he changed his name shortly after joining the NBA. No, it, it is it is Mammoth. Whatever his name is, because I've uh, seen him on Instagram. Yeah, Ma- Mahmoud Abdul Rauf. Yep. He, uh, yeah, full name is Chris Wayne Jackson. 51 years old. Uh, he was decent in his NBA career. Um, I remember uh, Mike Francesa having a conniption fit in the 1991 Cotton Bowl. <laughs> Why? Yes, Miami basically humiliated Texas. And Mike thought Texas was going to win? No. Well, I think he might have thought Texas was going to win, but by the halftime, it was over. And uh, Miami got over 200 and something yards of penalties in one game, like, uh, just just embarrassed Texas. A lot of the celebration rules you see in college now came from that game. <laughs> there was one... <laughs> One guy from Miami scored a touchdown. He goes Randall Hill. Scored a touchdown. And while they're kicking kick the extra point, he's doing like these gyrations up the tunnel. Oh, I remember. I actually do remember that. 
and and, uh, and uh, Mike Francesco was like, if this continues, they should throw them off the field and give the Texas the win by a forfeit. He's such a baby. And, my, and the final score of the game was four. And, uh, yeah, I'm looking up now. The final score of the game was forty six to three. Holy shit! And Miami got uh, got like uh, two hundred and two yards of penalties, fifteen penalties altogether. Yeah, they 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 uh, they, they uh, created the celebration uh, rule after that. Huh? They got like uh. Many of those penalties are unsportsmanlike conduct penalty. Where it was like, like Miami would, uh, would tackle the guy and then like rub his rub, rub the quarterback's face in the ground or get a penalty, and then they'll hit him again and do it again. Oh my god! It it was my and my friends are right. It was the most disgusting, it, it, disgusting, evident, <laughs> just like blatant, just like nasty thing a, 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 a team's ever done. And uh, what it was was uh, the Miami uh, had lost two games that year. Texas was only lost one game. It was ranked three. Notre- Miami was ranked number four. They likely were not going to get the championship, but they wanted to get the championship for some reason. And they just went out there to just to sun- just to to humiliate, not beat Texas, humiliate Texas humiliate just humiliate them in just such a way that it was just like it was like they 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 took the penalties on purpose just so they could beat them up even further it was the it was the just the the biggest beat down i've ever seen for a team ever it was personal yeah it, it was like it was like schoolyard i'm going to jump you and then beat you up and jump you again jesus Sounds that way. But, uh, Frank, we got a big weekend coming up ahead. Uh, NFL playoffs. You, let's uh, roll in with your tax picks. All right. Well, let's see. Uh, sorry for my neighbor, but I think the Bills are too red hot right now. They're going to win that game. <laughs> and you're going to have some holes in your ceiling. Probably. <laughs> I'm, gonna try, I'm trying to get him down for a stream. We'll see if that works out. Is he superstitious? Like, is he not going? He doesn't. Want I don't it? know. He, 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 he's you know he's peculiar at times. This guy for Creighton, the coach for Creighton. I just saw his mask. He's got a mask that's got a window on his mouth. That's bizarre. A clear window. So he's wearing a mask, but it's like a, a cloth around the uh, the edge there, and it's got the like a. Uh, a clear window that goes over his mouth. The strangest thing I've seen there. Yeah, uh, let me see. Very odd. Uh, I think the uh, I think the uh, Buccaneers will beat the Washington team. Uh, the Eagle. The, 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 there's going to be no Eagle situation here. <laughs> uh, I like the Seahawks over the Rams. Um, I might have taken the Browns over the Steelers, but with the Browns' COVID situation, that's just too fucked up. Um, I like the uh, Ravens to beat the Titans. Yeah, Ravens are red hot. And the Titans' defense is not playing well at all. No, they're going to run all over them. The Ravens had 405, over 400 rushing yards last week. They're, they're, they've gone off. And in the Nickelodeon game, I think the uh, referees find a way to screw the Saints over again. Bears are going to win. The Bears suck. The Bears literally got their asses kicked by the Packers and still made the playoffs because Kyler Murray. Yeah, but there, there, there's going to be like a you're going to see a play like this where a a, uh, a guy for the uh, Saints has his jersey turned like this and they're not going to call holding on it. And then Roger Goodell's going to go, sorry. <laughs> The Saints yeah. kind of the Saints are overrated as usual, but by, I, by the way, do you know what channel that game is going to be on? Nickelodeon. Round football in the air and year of magic. <laughs> Round football 
spinning through the air. It's going to be pure magic. It's the NFL playoffs on Nickelodeon. The NFL playoffs on Nickelodeon is ridiculous. How is, uh, were they going to have to censor it out and uh, block out the images if like players get in fights and stuff? <laughs> Maybe they'll just have SpongeBob on there going, Look what's going on! <laughs> oh my god. Frank, did you see Washington? Alex Smith cannot move. You put pressure on him and he cannot move. He, uh, he, fall, he has to fall down. That Taylor Taylor Heineke was getting first team reps today. They said that he might be have to rotate because Alex Smith, I guess, is in so much pain still. If the Eagles tried to play, win on Sunday, they would have. Even without trying, they, Jalen Hurts by himself was beating that team. Uh, and and, and they, you know, even taking Jalen Hurts out of the game, nobody that 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 that, that only let people not talk about the fact that they had the ball at the four and could have tied the game. You're trying to develop. Your young quarterback, why would you not want him to win that game? Which makes the whole Sudfeld thing just even more ridiculous. Yeah, your four-year journeyman backup who's about to be a free agent. Who's about to play in the XFL. He's not even good enough for that. He's, he literally couldn't tie his shoes and throw a forward pass. I've, I've never seen quarterback uh, the footballs actually go end over end. It was embarrassing. But at the same time, like, whatever. The Giants, yes, the Giants didn't deserve that. Everyone's like, Giants should have won more games, blah, blah. Yeah, no shit. The Giants, and if Brick Hands Evan Ingram, Frank, caught that pass in Philadelphia, the Giants would have won the division at 7-9 and nine when they beat Dallas. That game was won. That game was clinched if Ingram caught that ball in Philly. And, of course, he's back at it, dropped two big drops last week, and, and one was an interception that almost lost him the game against Dallas. He was responsible for six interceptions this year, 11 drops, and he made the Pro Bowl. He sucks. He sucks. He sucks. He's got like a mental uh, – it, it's a mental block. He makes so many mental errors now. I don't understand it. How he got voted the Pro Bowl is beyond me. All right. Do we have the ask the tanks? Yes, we do. Uh, I have a question for you. What do you think about Dave Gettleman staying with the Giants? I think the only reason he's staying is that they showed some signs of uh, progress. Yeah. And I think Joe Judge likes working with him. I think it was partly uh, Joe Judge, I'm sure, wanted him to say, too. I don't so, imagine they'd piss off their new head coach. So, yeah, the, 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 the fact that there was some progress without Saquon Barkley, too, is the reason he's not. He's going to be back next year. Yeah, and they said it today. They're like, we... Whether it's the draft or free agency, they need to prioritize uh, playmakers and wide receivers. And Bar- and Barkley will be back too, but they need they need a stud wide receiver. It might be Allen Robinson. Might be. I mean, I, Gallman wasn't bad, but he's not. It's not Bar- on Barkley. Yeah, Gallman did very well, but he's not Barkley. Besides that fucking fumble, he had two fumbles on on uh, Sunday. They they charged one to Daniel Jones, which was Gallman's fault. Uh, Gallman did not take the handoff. But the second one, uh, Giants clinched it with Gallman's first down run, and then he fumbled with no one touching him, and then he sat on the ball. Did you see that? <laughs> yes, and, and uh, that's why I I don't think there's a bit of commission. How did he know he has a ball under there? He doesn't have a ball to whistle. He's not right. You got to get the Cowboys a chance to get the football. And then, <laughs> and that's accurate. But then, yeah, he was right in the in first, and then they showed the next camera angle, and Gallman actually did recover it. Yeah, but Dallas Cowboys are always had to win. I I cannot stand them. I can't stand him and Joe Buck calling Giants Cowboys games. It's so fucking annoying. The love affair with the Cowboys. Dallas Cowboys are the greatest team in history of sorts. You know, these Cowboys should be allowed to win every game. You know, as I said, as I the term I came up with. Verbal fellatio. That's the only way to describe what goes on with uh, Cowboy games. Ridiculous. They were asked. The Cowboys were assholes, too. They were dirty. You see that guy, uh, Jordan Lewis, headbutted Caden Smith, who had a concussion already this year, headbutted him out of nowhere and then started laughing. They should have ejected his ass and fined him. Well, the referee's already a uh, Cowboy's best friend. 
Yeah, Jerry Jones is his best friend. They party with him and Dean Blandino on his party bus. But, uh, yeah, Frank, all right. So let's transition then. We have uh, Ask the Tank before we wrap up. Uh, Jay Sports 1999 said, would Barstool fund a raw dogging tour around the country? They might. That <laughs> could possibly happen. Is that something you've given thought? Yes. I know uh, there's possibilities of going to Chicago eventually, doing some raw dogging in uh, uh, Florida, probably when we do uh, the, the mini golf and uh, doing the putt putts as well, going around the country. You'd have to do it with Eddie in Chicago. Oh, of course. Eddie's the one that's talking about it. Yeah, that, that would be amazing. Um, John Follin says, Frank, have you reinforced your ceiling for the Colts game this weekend? <laughs> and also, could you shout out my two-year-old son during your next unboxing? They calm him down when he's having a tantrum. His name is Bobby. Thanks. Oh, my God. <laughs> well, let me try to write that name down. Bobby. <laughs> unboxing i'll <laughs> see if i remember that's amazing i just i just retweeted it <laughs> um that's um, that's actually probably the best ass the tank i think we've gotten um have you reinforced your ceiling nope i'm trying to get ralph down here so i won't have to worry about it <laughs> or you'll have to get an umbrella <laughs> M- manch otis says at Dennis Worth, where do you think DJ LeMayu will sign and will the Mets trade for Lindor? San Diego, Super Padres, San Diego, Padres, pa! They're going to have every three <laughs> agent this year, George Springer, too, and even Trevor Bauer. The Mega Market Padres are going to sign every fucking one. <laughs> so, Frank, are you pissed then about. I'm starting uh, to get angry. <laughs> all the Mets fans are so mad right now. I had a friend text me yesterday, like saying that this is just like the Will Ponds. Well, Trevor, uh, well, Springer hasn't signed anywhere yet. Trevor Bauer hasn't signed anywhere yet. One of them better be on the Mets. I think it'll be Springer. I mean, the Blue Jays gave him an offer for five years, not close to the 150 milli bonds. So, and think of it too the Mets are the only ones who have actually made moves, nobody else has made any moves. No, it, it, everyone, every, it, 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 well, the Padres have made moves. Padres have made moves, and the Mets, and that's it. No, it's not like the Mets are standing on their hands. It's just that it's getting just, what the fuck are we doing? And, and no one's doing anything. It's, these baseball things are getting weird now. It used to be that everything got signed early before Christmas. Now it's like everything goes, in the, the, goes into fe- January and February and even start of spring training now. Yeah, it's, uh, I wouldn't expect shit to happen fast with given the current situation it's the market it's not the mets uh, yeah that's exactly and that's why fans need to try and be patient and it's annoying though that uh they're out on sugano apparently because that was a signing that you know made sense they need starting pitching and, and, and you th- know what we don't know if sugano is gonna be that good we don't but he's pretty damn good in japan and uh but- and- but and now, for every for every uh, the, 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 the Tanaka, there's been uh, Kazishis. That's true, and Kagawa's. Yeah, but Frank Odorizzi too. The Mets apparently are not, are kind of out on now too. So it's like, what the fuck? They're not. I don't think they're going to get Bauer, especially if they get Springer. They need to get Springer. Well, we'll see who they do. We'll see who they get uh, with the pitching. They need somebody because Lugo needs to go back to the bullpen. And Brad Hand, too, they're interested in. But now the White Sox are also interested. Liam Hedricks is drawing a lot of interest from other teams when the Mets had an interest in him. They need, they need two, good, two more good relievers. Well, we don't, no, well, nothing's happened yet. So until something happens, I don't think there's anything to really talk about. No, but people are definitely pissed off. Um, IHNYC3, Frank says, should the Dolphins take a quarterback with a third pick? <laughs> well, we've already gone over that. <laughs> and someone else, they're loving these questions. He goes, should the Dol- someone, Cabo goes, should the Dolphins move on from two already or stick with him? And how much conviction do you have in whichever way you answer? These, I, that's, this is what I'm saying. Just what Lewis Riddick said, too. No patience. You, 
you've got to at least give him a year and put good players around him. I mean, Chan Gailey getting this uh, fired uh, or re- resigning. Uh, dear, maybe you're just bringing someone that's going to be a better fit for him. You got to get, you got to at least give it a year. You got to at least give it a year. I think three. I think three is fair for for quarterbacks that you take in the, like with that high of a pick. Yeah, at least three years. Because like people saying with Daniel Jones too, oh the Giants should get a quarterback. No, they shouldn't. They picked him six overall. Why would you move on from him? And give up on him after two years? He threw. He had twenty six touchdowns as a rookie, and that idiot Jason Garrett ruined him this year. But I mean, he still has potential and. You know, it's not ideal to have three OCs in three years, but and it, honestly, it fucking sounds like they're going to keep Garrett, which is sad, but at least put then put the right personnel around him. Let him throw down the field. The receivers get no, and the wide receivers do not get open in Garrett's system at all. It's embarrassing. Um, Adrian, Frank, in lieu of uh, NHL season starting next week, who do you think is going to win the cup this year? Please say Rangers. That's not going to be the Rangers. <laughs> you know, there's going to be an all Canadian division this year. Oh wait, what's with the uh, what's with those division names? <sighs> That's coming everywhere. <laughs> Ignore the sponsor name. It's North, West, East. And Central. So who's going to win the Cup? The Calgary Flames. Really? What makes you say that? It's been... Uh, well, the Canadian team hasn't won since 1993. And uh, this year, with the way the playoffs format set up, a Canadian team is guaranteed to be in the semifinals. Because the four divisions only play each other, and in the first two rounds they play each other, and there's going to be a div- division champion, and the two division champions will play each other in the conference finals. And, and with this, uh, I think the best Canadian team is the Calgary Flames. And I think just got a funny feeling the Flames are going to win the Stanley Cup. They got some exciting players. They got, you know, one of their best players is from New Jersey. Really? Johnny Gaudreau. They call him Johnny Hockey. Very exciting player, good goal scorer, fast. Yeah. They just have some defensive feed, uh, and sometimes goal, they, their goaltending has not always been the best. But you got they got some uh, really high scoring, dynamic players, especially Johnny Gaudreau. All right, nice. Well, Frank, that's all we have for tonight. Um, it's great being able to join you again after a little hiatus and. Uh, we're going to have a lot, a lot of sports coming up. It's a very, very exciting time in the sports world and for the NFL playoffs. So take us out with a little song. Round football in the air in the world of magic. Look around. It's a NFL on Nickelodeon. It's pure magic. It's going to be ridiculous. NFL Nickelodeon. All right, let me stop recording.